Welcome to the huddle. We're here at Gibson Performance Training. We got the whole staff in the building. I'd like to say thank y'all for coming on the show, man. It means a lot. Well, we play, you know, basketball together coming up and everything. So first of all, give us a little background on, on the staff. All right, so uh, my staff is pretty, pretty unique, I would say. Uh, slogan we live by is at the end of the day, we family. Um, and I look at my whole staff as family. Uh, these are guys that I've, I've worked with or, um, and when I say work with, I mean like I've actually trained these guys. Uh, but these are also guys that I talk to on on and off the field. I've talked to in and out the gym, and I, you know, still talk to them. We still, you know, lean on each other for advice outside of the gym as well as in the gym. So it's a very unique staff. Um, to introduce everybody, uh, it's my brother Chris Gibson. It's my man Gerald Hall, Brent Wilkerson, and then Paul Davis. All right. <clears throat> Chris, you went to Central as well. How's the relationship working with your brother? It's a, it's a great relationship. Um, we always were very involved in sports. Um, he always pushed me, always looked up to him as an athlete, and you know, always kind of wanted to be in his shoes. Um, I always liked the way you know he, he was just so eager to get to get better and always put in work. So I, I always wanted to be that way. So. You know, it is always a pleasure. All right, so those that are not brothers, you know, <laughs> we just got y'all rundown. But give us a little breakdown about what y'all do and what y'all bring to the team. Uh, I mean, you know, for me, my 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 passion is basketball. Like I'm, I'm just I'm a basketball fanatic. Um, so for me, my thing is, especially when it comes to you know the training aspect of of what we do here. It's always making sure we push the kids because it's always about discipline. It's not just always about getting strong. It's about you know having that discipline. You gotta you gotta attack a workout the same way you do on the field or on the court. And so in here, you know, it's, it's no nonsense. We like to have fun. But if you can't get through the workout, then it's, it's no games. You can't play no mm -hmm. games. Facts. Um, so I don't really know him as Martin. <clears throat> know him as Coach Mo. Um, he coached me my last year at the Matha 2012 football team. Um, Going through college, I always came back, he trained me, um, always willing to work with me, whether it was on a Sunday, whenever he had time, he opened his arms up to me. Um, so um, when I came back, out of, when I got out of school, it was easy for me when I wanted to get into this industry to look to him because he was like family. He always treated me like family. He always wanted the best for me. And uh, I always liked how he always kept it real. So I came to him kind of as a, as for him to be a mentor to me, you know, to help me blossom and do what I want to do as well. Well, I, I know Mo, like you say, Martin, but I know Mo um, through his father-in-law. Uh, hooked up with Mo, started training, started working out with him. Um, just in those workouts, he showed me some different things. It, it's not all about just lifting weights. It was it's, it's about conditioning. It's about focusing on the muscle and strengthening that muscle, strengthening whatever it is that <clears throat> needs to, you know, as far as if you have an injury. We just not throwing the weight. So just in that learning aspect, I got a little more interested in it. Uh, as the kids started coming through, I, I brought my godson through also to start training with him. And when my godson started working out with him, uh, Mo and Chris allowed me to start, you know, working and helping out. And that's how I became part of the team. Nice. So Mo, Martin Gibson, which one do you prefer? It Coach Mo? It, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, <coughs> Martin is, is is a well. I got Mo in, in high school, and I got it through sports. So a lot of times, it, it allows me to distinguish when people who actually met me in my life. So a lot of people that use the word Mo, I know they they met me after ninth grade, after my ninth grade year. People that say Martin, I know those are people that probably know me for a long period of time. So Martin. <laughs> <laughs> So give us the history of how you got started, man. Man, so it's, it's uh, I started out in the basement. Um, I've been in sports my whole life, pretty much. Uh, and I started out in the basement, didn't have much. I didn't want to, 
I didn't want to run out of gym. I didn't want to do like the, the, the regular routine that you see most trainers doing. Um, I basically, what I did was I, I bet on myself. Uh, I bought a yoga ball, a dark green yoga ball that I still have, and I bought two five pound dumbbells from sports authorities. Uh, I had a best, I got a best friend that wanted to lose some weight and we basically worked out every day for an hour. So most people couldn't even come up with a workout for an hour using just a yoga ball and five pound dumbbells. But I was able to do that and from, and being creative like that, I was able, and from the money that I made from that, I was able to buy more equipment and the clientele grew from that. And I was just able to continue to grow from there. Gotcha. So I want everybody to touch base on this, this topic right here. What is the message that Gibson Performance brings when you're training? How do you handle a young kid, an older woman, somebody that's injured, somebody that's hurt, whatever the case may be, an athlete versus a nine to five. And we'll start with you, Chris. I think most importantly is just believing in yourself and having that confidence. Um, whether you're coming from an injury or whether you just want to lose weight um, or you just want to tone up and feel good about yourself, um, GPT gives an experience like no other. Um, we have trainers who actually care for you, and you know it ain't just about the money. Like uh, like Brent said, uh, Martin was was able to offer his time um, at the the wee hours of the day, um, and, and that's what we do. So you know it, it's all about um, when 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 can you work out? So we'll be available for you whenever you want to work out, um, and just give you that support. Um, give you that push and you know just trying to help you reach your goal and make you feel good about yourself but it is more of the experience of just a, a family a family experience where we, we just we want to help out everybody okay and piggyback off what Chris was saying <clears throat> that's one of the things that we always try to stress uh, to our clients is like you know when you when you work out people usually gonna work out till they get tired right but you know, that, that's not when you get stronger, that's not when you get better, that's not when you get faster, that's not when you get more conditioned. You get more conditioned when you get past that point, right? So, you know, we're in here to try to give you that confidence, you know, to know that you can get further, that you can go further, you can go faster, you can get stronger. And so the whole thing is, is you know, we're here as a support system. And, and like, you know, like Mon was saying earlier, you know, not, it's not just with us, you know, we, we try to have that uh, certain level of relationship with our clients outside of the gym because we are family, you know, and so, you know, we can have conversations about certain things outside of here just so people know, you know, it's not just like Chris said, it's not just about the money, it's not just about lifting weights, it's not just about running track, it's not just about all that stuff, but it's about having that personal relationship, you know, and so people feel comfortable. Okay, I want to change the question before we go to commercial. So we're in the new year. And most people have goals, aspirations, I want to lose weight. What message do you give to the people that say, okay, my New Year's resolution is to lose 20 pounds, but around February, they back at, you know, Jerry's or wherever they eat, the diet is wrong, and they're not coming, and it's eager to work out? Well, it's, it's, it's pretty much, the thing I like to tell them is it's not really about, let's not look at the 20 pounds. Let's try to make this a lifestyle. You know, it's, it's, we can reach goals, but let's take a little bit at, at a time. You're going to have your setbacks but continue to push through. Don't worry about your setbacks. Everybody has setbacks. You want to eat bad. You want to, you know, it's going to be those times, but continue to push through and, and you know, just continue to go forward. And it'll, 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 it'll come. It'll come. Okay. Well, stay tuned after these commercials. We'll be right back with Gibson Performance Training.
Welcome back to the huddle. We're here live at GPT training facility. We're going to get right into the barbershop talk. So, fellas, why did you decide to be a trainer and why did you select GPT as your home? Um, I decided to be a trainer um, due to the fact in college I found myself falling in love with the process. Um, you only get 10 to 12 games, but little do people know college football is 365. You know, so as far as me falling in love with the process, it's of getting ready for the games, you know, weightlifting, stretching, eating properly, all those things played a huge part in me, you know, going into being a trainer because I love helping people. You know, I saw Coach Mo and how rewarding it is for him helping people, and uh, that that kind of trickled down to me as as far as you know being able to affect people's lives in a positive way when they come in having a bad, horrible day, but when they see you, you know, they're allowed to get some stress off their shoulders. And they leave with smiles. So it's nothing but a blessing to be able to do that. And as far as choosing GPT, um, family. It's easy. You know, mm -hmm. family. That's it. <laughs> uh, as far as what made me want to be a trainer uh, is, you know, just like <clears throat> working out isn't supposed to be easy. And, you know, we say that all the time to our, our athletes, whoever comes in here for training. It's, it's not supposed to be easy. So, you know, being a former athlete and, and going through some training, uh, like Mon said earlier, you know, he put me through some uh, some training work. Uh, and so knowing how hard that process can be, like B said, he said he fell in love with the process. And it's the same way you learn to fall in love with that process and you understand how difficult it can be. And so when you're working out on your own, you can't push yourself as hard as when you have somebody there to push you. And so you always want to be mm. that motivation for somebody to get people where they want to go, even if they can't do it on their own. Man, like B said, we chose GPT because of family. I mean, we all look at each other like brothers. Ahead. You know what I mean? It's, it's not just when we in the gym, it's outside of the gym. Um, you know what I mean? It's, this is a family business, man. It's just, you know, it's all love here. Respect. Me? Uh, I just enjoy working out. I enjoy <laughs> working out. And from there, uh, from me working out, I just start, I figured I can start helping other people. Other people ask, you know, what do you do? How do you do it? So that's how I got into it. Like I say, from working with working out with Martin, uh, he showed me a couple of things. So as far as me choosing GPT, it came it came from one, like he said, family. Because when you come in, you work out, but by the time you leave and you start, you, you know, you done came through and done a couple of sessions, you feel comfortable. You know, you're able to walk out, and it, it is a family atmosphere in here, and also the creativity. It's a bunch of create, creativity amongst us all when it's far as workouts. Um, I, I chose um, because I was always an athlete. Um, I'm the youngest of five boys, and just about everything was a competition. And like just waking up in the morning, being the first in the living room to grab the remote to be in charge of the, the cable television was a competition. So, um, you know, it's it's like it's, it's it's more just being comfortable, and it's like the saying where they said um, you you should love where you work, and and it's like this this is a passion of mine. So I, I was I just consider myself as still an athlete, and because I always I, I want to compete with the guys I train with, and and just push them to a level where um, I either was or never could reach. And just just pushing somebody past a point where you know a, a level I couldn't achieve, and knowing that I was part of that process, you know, it's it's definitely a good feeling. Family, man, I I, uh, I got into the business because I I just I love the process. I love helping people, and I love seeing the growth. Uh, <coughs> and, and, and when I say when I say growth, I mean the development from the time someone's with you to the time they, they leave or, you know, uh, doing a process of, of, of them uh, uh, improving. Uh, I started GPT because, like I said, I wanted to bet on myself. I wanted to prove to people that I didn't have to go the regular way, uh, that I could make something stronger, and something better, and something, something bigger than what everybody else has created and has, has, has watered, pretty much a watered down product. <coughs> I wanted to show people that you didn't need all the all, all the glamour. You didn't need all the fancy equipment. You can you can actually do your homework, study it, study study your client, 
and create your own workout and be able to get and be able to have better results than what you know instead of having like a thousand different uh, machines. Okay, so we all kind of touch based on family. So we all know with family, there also comes fights and struggles. So what's some of the struggles as a trainer and also being with the family at GPT? And we'll start back with the first one. Uh, it's, it's easy to, you know, to get up early, five o'clock, stay late, you know, to train kids. But it's the struggles I find is, you know, pouring back into myself, you know, mentally, physically, spiritually. As a young man, I'm still learning, you know, how to juggle training, you know, 10 to 12 people a day, but still having time to work out, still have time to study my craft, still have time to, to do the things I need to do to better myself. So, you know, you got to find that, that good balance in between, you know, working out, training people, doing stuff like that. So that's that's my personal struggle with being a trainer. Okay. Uh, struggle, uh, I mean, like, like we were saying, it's, it's hard enough trying to do, you know, 10 to 12 people. Um, for me, I, I have a full-time job, so I'm up in the morning, um, another full-time job. So I'm up in the morning, you know, 6.30, and I try to get to the gym, 6.30, 7 o'clock, uh, work out. You know, like we were saying, trying to find time for yourself, even after workouts, it's like, you know, you don't want to take away from the kids, so you're going to get the kids, you can get whoever you got as a client, 110%. And then after the day is done, you gotta find that time for yourself. Um, so you know, it's, it's sometimes it's you know 16 to 20 hour days, but coming in here is more enjoyable than my full time job. So it's not work when it's here. Mm. You know? Hope your boss isn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, you know, my, my day starts. My alarm clock goes off at 3 a.m. Ooh, come mighty right early. Yeah. yeah. So I'm I'm up. And you know, moving around. So for me, my struggle comes in as far as trying to get, trying to find that that period of time when you can, you know, get some rest because the body does require, you know, some type of rest. But uh, like you say, just getting, you know, getting up, going, getting through your full time job, and then you come in here and you, you know, you start working with your clients. That you know, that's fulfilling thing. So that it pushes you to, you know, continue to do it every day. So. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think my struggle is, um, I guess, just wanting to get better all the time. Um, I adjust my schedule. Also, uh, I used to work at a vending company. I used to work 11, 12 hours a day, so I had to quit that. And I became, cert I, I got certified and became training full time, but I also started to Uber. So whenever I wasn't training, I can Uber. And whenever I get off back, back off the road and come back to the gym to train, so I'm always working around the clock. But it was always it was convenient for me because I also had a little one. So um, you know, like time time was definitely a, um, a problem in the beginning, but um, we worked through it. Um, but I think uh, for me, just just constantly wanting to get better, um, not not sticking to a routine, um, wanting to change things up. And you know, like like Mar said, we started in the basement where we, we didn't have much space. Now we have a, a bigger space here, and it's just like you know, your, your mind can go anywhere. So you be just very creative, and just just want to change things up. So just yeah, just just want to be creative and not, not stick into a routine. Gotcha. Well, my biggest struggle is just just uh, the pressure I put on myself to help others. Like so. Whether it's a new client coming in that want to be trained by me or whatever, whatever it may be, or whether it's uh, thinking of a, a class or something that we can all do as a group as trainers to learn uh, learn something, or whether it's hey, let me uh, you know let me think of a way to reward them, or maybe like try to come up with a way where they can teach a certain class that something that they love and, and whatnot. Uh, I think that's the biggest struggle that I have is that. Uh, I'm not a person that don't care. Like I want to see them grow because I know they are they are part of this process. Like every time you see GPT, don't just think about me. Think about these these men that you see here because we all put in that time. We all put in in the effort. Gotcha. So let's let's talk about some of the notable names that you've trained and also which one do you prefer, the the high end athlete or the young kid that's trying out for his first time? Uh, you know what? And that, that that's that's one thing I want to clear up. Um. It's not. It's not just me, you know. Uh, like when Jared comes in here, Jared, Jared might see me, might see he might see Gerald, he might see Brent, 
he might see Chris. The only reason why he might not see Paul because Paul is, is probably at work. Um, man, I, I trust my guys with, with anybody that come in this gym. I mean, Jeremy Grant came in. Chris, Chris has had him one on one. Like, uh, man, we we it's, it's not just about me, and that's what I just want people to know. Like, we are all skilled. We are all we all uh, we don't want to call it. We we all talk and 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 like we say, we family. So we all. You know, we stay on one page and make sure you know that that uh, the athlete gets what whatever it needs, or or the non-athlete gets whatever it needs. Okay, so talk a little bit about Wale. <clears throat> I heard y'all coming out with an album. <laughs> 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 no, man, Wale, man. Uh, I mean, it's it, it's fun working with him, man, because he's he 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 is DMV. Like that's all he talks about. That's 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 what he loves. That's what he that's what he supports. And I mean, uh, I mean, it, it, it's fun to work with him. Like he's he's not a cocky guy. Um, he's a fun dude to be around. He's a fun dude to talk about. But the one biggest thing that I realized with Wale is like he loves sports. So Wale go, you know, he hit me at three o'clock in the morning talking about sports, or or like at one o'clock thinking I'm not asleep, but he's on the West Coast, but he's talking about a basketball game. So I'll get texts like that through him. But like like I say, man, he he support the DMV, man, and I I, I actually I like it. Okay, so fellas, everyone is chipping in as a family to help out Jared, Jared Hurd as his trainer. So how does that routine normally go? And how – we working with a boxer right now. So how do y'all push a boxer knowing he could put them paws on you if he needed to? So what's <laughs> – Chris, how do y'all handle that? How do you push Jared Hurd? Well, I mean, we all come together as and, and develop a game plan. So – you know, Martin. Martin is his his head trainer, so you know we'll come together and he'll he'll do his research on you know like his opponent and and Jared's last fight and what he struggled with. So we'll we'll come up with a, um, methods of just like he, he needs to he need to build his shoulders up or you know he, he needs to follow through with his punches. So we'll, we'll just come up with exercises that will um, you know we'll, we'll just get him better. And you get them stronger, get them faster, and get them quicker. Okay, fellas. Uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've worked with, like Martin said, I do. I, I'm usually at work during the day when Jared comes in here. But I mean, I've worked with Jared a couple times, and the thing about it is, Jared's a professional, <clears throat> so he knows he always wants to get better, he always wants to get stronger, he always wants to get faster. So it's never a thing of uh, when he's getting in here, we're saying, hey, you know, this is what we got uh, planned for you. That he complains or he's crying about it. Jared gets through it. He works hard. And, and, and it is what it is. I mean, it's never, it's never a, when you're dealing with an athlete who's a professional and, and, and attacks their craft the same way they do, you know, when it's go time and the lights are on, you know, it, it, it makes it easy on us. So. Okay. Anybody else got any input? Uh, pretty much. I think just watching all of us as far as working with Jerry, we, it's not a, specific, you know, we focus on, Whatever, whatever Martin put together, but also we, we treat each client the same. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, he nice. gets special treatment or anything. We, we, we focus on your need and we push you through, push you through the exercise. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I love it. Okay, so Mo, the math. Let's talk about the math a little bit. Running back specialist. So McGregor is back in town. He got the job. Will you be on the staff next year? What are you thinking? Uh, I'm gonna tell you this, man. I, I gave my word to a kid that I'll see him till he graduated, and I plan with the opportunity. I plan to uh, see him till he graduates. So uh, I meet with him on Monday. McGregor wants me to stay on the staff, and I plan on staying on staff. Respect. So what's next for GPT? I mean, we got this space. We started in the basement. Now we here. What's going on? Ne next thing, man, is a is a is a bigger space. Uh, bigger space. I also want to run like a couple camps. Um, we got we got guys like I said that are very good at what they do, man. And um, I want to showcase that as much as possible and show people that GPT is not just me; it's it's, it's everybody that's right here that you see in uh, in this interview. Okay, so my last question before we go to commercial: What have you seen as far as a transition from when we all were coming up? We would go out back, play with the older kids, or go to the court, go on the field. You watch the, the kids that are older than you, and that's kind of what you wanted to be. Right now, these everybody has a trainer. Of course, it's helping you guys, but do you see a difference in the style of play with the old school versus the new wave of the internet? Um, I think it's a difference. Um, you know, like when we was coming up, 
um, we idolize players and we used to go out and mimic their movements. Sure. So, yeah. you know, now you, you actually have trainers who can, um, you know, build your craft up and, you know, have, have your movements a lot fluent. Um, you, you're a lot stronger and quicker at a younger age. So, you know, when you do come up age where um, you, 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 when you're actually hitting the weights, you're a lot more explosive than just the guy who used to mimic an athlete. So, you know, like the, the, even in football, you know, like the receivers, like you got six, four, six, five receivers in almost each sport, the athlete is getting bigger and stronger almost in each sport. So you, you got to adapt. Uh, personally, as the younger guy on the staff, you know, oh, these guys are a little bit older than me. Uh, I mean, but um, I, I just think uh, things are more available now. Um, you know, back then, you know, ed the education for, for this industry wasn't as big as it is now. So I feel like kids and parents, they take advantage of starting their kid off at five. You know what I'm saying? I didn't start working out seriously until I was maybe 13 or 14. You know what I'm saying? So you got kids working out at five, you know, by the time they're 14 or by the time they're 18, they're grown men in the weight room, you know? So it's like, it, that, I think that's the, the, the biggest difference is the more the more availability of the training. You know, I, I didn't have that back in the day, you know, as far as, and I'm not even that old, to be honest. So I just feel like the training aspect and the information that people know now and are willing to give out is what people take advantage of. Okay. Well, we'll be right back after these commercials. One, two, 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 public service announcement. questions they got one second to answer we're gonna start with you Chris favorite NBA team Wizards team LeBron <laughs> Wizards Wizards <laughs> I don't even have a favorite team ah. sure. team LeBron who was the GOAT as far as running back all time Barry Sanders Barry Sanders Barry Sanders Jim Bryant Barry mm -hmm. Jim Bryant if you weren't coaching or training what would you be doing um being the greatest father ever mm. that would be me <laughs> Sitting at a desk somewhere. Probably, hang, Go ahead. probably hanging out with the wife. Driving the <laughs> wife crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite football movie of all time? Program. Mm. Uh, I don't have one. Uh, Little Giants. Mm. Any given Sunday. <laughs> Any given Sunday, but oh, Al Pacino, man. last speech. I guess. Yeah. That was, yeah. As a coach, running back wise, who you want? Ezekiel Elliott or Saquon Barkley? I get, I, I gotta get Saquon. Saquon, upside. Uh, Saquon. 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 Hold on, so that's unanimous. So we gonna go back and say why? Yeah, that's easy. He's a dog. I mean, he's he's a, he's a, he's a workhorse, and he's young. I mean, he's just, what can he what what can't he do? So. And like Chris said, I mean, it, it ain't just rushing that makes you a good running back. It's being able to protect against the you know, pass rushes and all of that stuff, man. And, you know, Saquon being so young, being a rookie, look where he's at now. So his upside is extremely high. So, yeah. He's uh, personally, I, I've seen it in live action. I played with him for a year. So you can't tell me he's not better than Ezekiel Elliott because I've seen it in practice, weight room, everywhere. <laughs> just a bull, young bull. <clears throat> I just think. I just think you better. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like the Cowboys. <laughs> All right, so who you got winning the Super Bowl this year? Oh, man, I got the uh, – at the end of the day, man, I got the Patriots winning. Somehow, some way, they're going to they gonna win it. Um, yeah. Shoot, man. Man, same here, probably the Patriots. 
Going with the Rams. Go with I do want to see the Rams win, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the Saints. I'm gonna be optimistic and say the Redskins. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <Always hometown team. laughs> hometown all the way. All right, Chris, since you optimistic, give me your top three running backs of all time. Top three would be uh, Barry, Walter Payton, and Jerome Bettis. Jim Brown. With a straight face. Yeah, with a straight okay. face. Jim, Jim, Brown. Uh, Jim Brown, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders. Barry, Walter, Herschel. Herschel. No. Mm. Barry, uh, Barry uh, Walter, and probably Brown. Barry, Walter, yeah. I just told you those things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say Ezekiel Elliott. All right, let's close it out right here. Last shot. Who you want to have the ball? Oh, Jordan, Kobe, or LeBron? Oh, okay. Ooh, last shot. Last shot, uh, Jordan, of course. Wait, but this is taking so long. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah Jordan. 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 <laughs> Last shot, Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, man, Jordan, dog. 23. Definitely Jordan. All right, that was too easy. If you can coach or train any athlete, any celebrity, who would it be? Uh, I would say Wendy Williams. <laughs> oh, no. You ever seen her body? She's on GPT? <laughs> I'm telling you. We know what we're doing here. She'll be hey, a whole nother no. celebrity. She'll be a whole nother celebrity. <laughs> Shout out to Wendy Williams, too. Hey, yeah, no yeah. disrespect, though. Man, hey, she feel like a banana. Hey, uh, LeBron. Obama. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Give me any boxer. <clears throat> Floyd. 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 Yeah, I take Floyd. Um, probably be uh Shaq. Big Shaq. Big Shaq. I ain't gonna call him Big Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's why he picked him though. Right? Hey, hey, right? Hey, hey, Smith. Hey, 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 all right. <laughs> Hey man, we well thank y'all once again for coming on the huddle. It's always like family. Welcome to the huddle.